You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. Here goes it. He it down. How about a poster? Anthony Davis is on fire. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. For all things Pelicans, you're now listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. I'm Big Q, and we're going to be breaking down this Pelicans game against the Jazz, recapping it, man, on podcast 258-258 on the Pelican Post Game Report, recapping Pels and Jazz. Ain't looking so good in this one, man. Really ain't look so good. 132 to 111 thrashing at home in the Smooth the King Center. Don't usually like to see anything like this happen to the Pelicans. And of course, AD, it was dropped on us right before the game. AD had a sprained elbow. He wouldn't be getting going in this one. But before we get started into the breakdown, I'd like to thank all you guys that with that round of applause for, for you, the new and established listeners of the Pelican Post Game Report. Welcome. Welcome to the show today as we'll be recapping this game. 132 to 111, the Jazz once again thrash the Pelicans. Of course, AD ain't there. We can start off by saying AD, which is the focal point of the Pelicans offense, wasn't available in this one, which is really interesting if you take a look at what the Pelicans did. The Pelicans have enough to beat the Jazz. That's the question. Did they have enough to beat the beat the Jazz? And I would say yes. Some might dif- disagree with me, but I will say yes. But before we get into that, let's do a little rundown here on the Pelican Post Game Report, episode 258. We're going to break that game down and recap it. We're also going to hear what Elvin Gentry had to say about this one, man. Um, he's going to break down his thoughts in this game. We also are going to have in- an interview with uh, Jalil Okafor. He'll chime in on when- what happened. And, of course, we'll break down what went wrong in the game. We'll have the Pelican Post Game Report question of the day, which will be revealed momentarily. And, of course, in the second half of the show, We'll preview the Pels in a Nuggets matchup that'll happen on Monday night. So without further ado, let's get right into the show. Pelicans go down in flames without Anthony Davis. And of course, they lose their very first game of the season at 4-1, and 3-1 at home. Now, the way I view this, the Pelicans knew what the Jazz were going to do. Donovan Mitchell was quiet in this one. He, he didn't have to act the fool and score a bunch of points in this Critical f- things really hurt the Pelicans in this game. Before we get individual, we're going to play, we're going to do team first. Pelicans, 40 of 95 shot, 42% in this game versus the Jazz, 46 of 88 for 52%. Pelicans were 9 of 34 from downtown. A horrible 26 and a half percent versus the Jazz with just 10 out of 32. So they hit one three-pointer better for 31.3 percent. Free throws, the Pelicans were 22 of 29 for about 76 percent. Decent Jazz, 30 of 37 from the line. So they got eight more three-point made than the Pelicans for 81 uh, percent from the free throw line. Total rebounds, Pelicans did win the rebound battle barely, 56 to 50, 55. It didn't look like it to me, but the Jazz had 37 defensive rebounds in this one. You know, that was mostly Rudy Gobert in there. Pelicans uh, lost to Steel War 7-4. The Block War 7-5, of course, with Ianne Davis. Then the turnovers. They had 16 turnovers in this game, which gave up 18 points off 16 turnovers versus the Jazz with 13 turnovers given up on a 9. Not much of a fast break game because the Jazz defense usually stop you from doing that. Pelicans averaged on the year a NBA best 128 points a game, but in this one, the Jazz held them to a loud 111. So significant reduction based upon how the, the Jazz defense were able to pull this game out. Points in the paint. Jazz 64 to 52, a clear advantage. They won in that battle by 12 points. And then if the Pelicans had a boatload of personal fouls, 32 personal fouls versus 26 in this matchup. Now, I see what Coach Gentry has to say before we get the individual. Then we'll tell you about what went wrong. Here's Coach Gentry breaking out his thoughts on the game. Well, I thought we started the game in the right way. We were moving the ball and, uh, uh, you know, getting the shots that we needed. I thought uh, defensively we were pretty solid in what we were doing. You know, we had a game plan where we were going to take certain things away and, uh, and then we were going to have to give up something in order to take those things away and and they made plays out of that situation uh and then i thought the second quarter we went away from what we were doing uh i thought we had too many uh bad shots number one 
Uh, we tried to do things that we weren't capable of doing, and we, we and our ball movement uh, stopped in the second quarter. So uh, we just got to do a better job, especially against a team of that quality. You know, they're not going to ever beat themselves. You're going to have to execute, and you got to beat them. Uh, and then, you know, the, the lob thing kind of got out of hand for us with uh, Gobert. Uh, we weren't able to defend that. And, uh, uh, you know, that, that's, that's where he got separation. But, you know, I thought we were part of the problem because I didn't think we did a good job uh, in our shot selection and we didn't do a good job in our ball movement there. And when they got the separation and we put the, the, the bench in, I thought those guys just competed and played hard and, you know, almost got us back in the game. You know, we got it to eight, and then they put the starters back in. And, and our guys still played pretty good. But, you know, eventually, I mean, obviously, uh, their starters was going to wear down those guys, and they played a lot of minutes. But I was proud of the way the bench played. I thought they competed like crazy, like I said. And, uh, you know, it's a learning experience for us. You know, we've got to get better. You know, we're going to play uh, a bunch of quality teams on this road trip. And so we've got to learn to execute, and we've got to learn to not go away from – uh, what the game plan is, and then if it doesn't work, uh, then we can say we have to make an adjustment as a coaching staff. But we have to follow the game plan, and we, we've just got to get better at making good decisions in our offense from the standpoint of ball movement, shot selections, things like that, and, and not try to do things that we're not capable of doing. Coach, will, will you leave here tonight thinking more about this game or thinking more about the fact that you had a 3 and one homestand? Oh, you know, you're supposed to have a three-in-one homestand. You know, you really are. And uh, so we really, you know, think that we should win all of our games at home. And that's where you have to get to. You have to get to that mentality. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're not going to win all your games at home, but we got we to gotta win the mass majority of them. And uh, we have to play better than we did tonight. Uh, we need to play like we did in, in spots, but... We have to play better than we did overall if we're going to beat quality teams. And obviously there's a ton of quality teams still left to come in here. Is there any long-term concern with AD? Uh, no, no, no. There's not any long-term concern. He, he played through, I mean, he played the rest of the game. And, you know, just a situation where, you know, obviously you plan on adrenaline. And when the game's over, you realize that, you know, there's a little bit of a strain there. He came in the day and uh, tried to shoot it, shoot around. There's still a little bit of pain there. So... Uh, and it's like with Alfred. I mean, I'm not going to risk anything over one game, uh, you know, that could be something that could extend out. So uh, Alfred dribbled it up the court in the third quarter. I didn't think I didn't like what I saw. And uh, and rather than risk him out there, I took him out of the game and we played other guys. That's Coach A.O. Gentry with his thoughts about the game, the loss to the Jazz. Now, what's interesting, we go into the individual statistics in this game. Now, Coach Gentry made a ton of points. Might not get all get to all of them before the break, but looking at the box score for this one, going over the individual statistics, the Pelicans, man, um, with a, without AD, Nikolai Meritage to carry today, 25 points, 10 of 18 from the field in 28 minutes of action, had eight rebounds in the game as well. Drew Holiday was a second to score, and he had 18 points, 7 of 13, 0 for 4 from downtown, 4 of 4 from the free throw line. He had six assists, a couple of blocks in the game, one steal. Through 29 minutes, outside of that, each one more was completely out of his element. One of six shooting in 25 minutes, finished with five points. Alfred Payton was, was just terrible. You know, this was worse, the worst I've seen him yet in a Pelican uniform. 16 minutes, he was all one, uh, four assists, two rebounds in the game, didn't score a bucket, and then he ultimately had some type of ankle injury. I haven't seen a report on it yet, but he had an ankle injury. It must have been something for it to remove him from the game. But before he had that ankle injury, he was getting killed by Ricky Rubio. I mean, Rubio had free realm of the paint, and, and I think to myself, Andy Davis means so much to the Pelicans that you don't really truly appreciate him un until he's gone, until he's not there. The Giants succubus from a defensive standpoint that he just swaps shots off and forces people to uh, change their shots. There's no way Ricky Rubio would have got these sucker layups that he was getting in the paint against some of Anthony Davis with them. Being that they said, Alfred, Alfred Payton was horrible in this game. Ultimately, he left the game. Uh, he had an ankle injury. Uh, we hadn't heard anything but about it, so we'll keep a tune on it. But outside of that, Julius Randle, 19 minutes off the bench, 5 of 11 from the field. He was 0 for 3 from downtown, 2 of 2 from the line, finished with 12 points, 3 rebounds, and he had 4 personal 
personal fouls in this one. He had, of those four personal fouls, he had three offensive fouls, which were very questionable calls. This game was officiated poorly, in my opinion. This was a very poorly officiated game toward the Pelicans. That's one of the things I realized about this game. Was that it, was a poor, it was poorly officiated. No doubt about it. I watch enough NBA games. I know when there's a good officiated game, a mediocre one, and this one was a poorly officiated game. You know, and the Jazz took advantage of having more free throw attempts at the line and also the fact that Elvin Gentry mentioned the game plan. Well, let's let's let me let's keep tuned to what we're doing. Off the bench, the bench guys came in and they did some stuff. Jalil Okafor played in 14 minutes. He was four of nine, three of three from the line. He finished with 11 points and six rebounds in 14 minutes. Frank Jackson got a lot of burn. He finished with 14 points in this one through 23 minutes, three of nine from the field, one of four from downtown, seven to nine from the free throw line. So he he looked really good. And it's hopefully Gentry will get his kids some more burn. Sheik Diallo got out there. And in 11 minutes, he scored 10 points. He was four of eight, had four rebounds. Sheik Diallo, really, the second unit, really got these guys back into it. Tim Frazier, Ian Clark, Kendrick Williams came in there. Solomon Hill played well defensively, 20 minutes. He was two of eight shooting, one of three from downtown, one of two from the free throw line, six points. And Wester Johnson hit two three-pointers in his game to kind of cycle the Pelicans back into the contest with eight within eight points. Problem is the Jazz put their people back in. Pelicans did. He put Drew. He put Drew Holiday back in the game, but didn't cycle Nikolai Miritich back in. And to my knowledge, I checked the injury report. There was nothing wrong with Nikolai Miritich for the for whatever reason. Elvin Gentry just decided to take one of his best offensive players and leave him on the bench, even though the Pelicans were making a run. You instituted Drew Holiday back in the game, Watt, and you probably would have caught the, the team. It was a shitty coach game by Elvin Gentry. Let's just get that out. Yeah, it was a terrible called game. Elvin Gentry were absolutely horrible in this game and his calls. Length. Is Length. The only seven footer that you have. And of course, we're going into the what went wrong segment. What went wrong was Elvin Gentry. His shitty game plan in this one. He's part of my Portuguese. But the reality of the situation is if you're going to defend Lent, you can't defend Lent with a smallish player. The only other seven footer that you have on the team outside of Anthony Davis is Jalil Okafor. That's why I kept preaching during the preseason that the Pelicans need length. They had a Brandon McCoy, who was a seven footer who moves pretty good. I was praying that they kept that kid on this active roster because you need that length. When you, when you get a guy, Guy like Rudy Gobert, you need a seven footer that can battle with a seven footer, not a six nine guy or six ten guy. Rudy Gobert is a seven two guy, seven foot one, seven foot two, catching lobs at the basket all night long. Then when the second half, I say, okay, Elvin Gentry's gonna make an adjustment. He's got to. Obviously, you got to play Jalil Okafor, and he didn't. Now, of course, we got a question from one of the commenters that asked about Jalil Okafor, DJ Austin, who who made a comment about it. DJ said spoke about Jalil Okafor getting time, and how ironic it is that Andy Davis is hurt for the game with a sprained elbow. Julius Randle's face. And all kind of problems with with the referees, he's limited just 19 minutes in the game. And then ultimately, you have to rely upon your other seven footer off the bench to, to help. If I promise you that if Jaleel Okafor was playing in this game and he would have started the second half, Rudy Gobert wouldn't have got all those lobs at the basket like that. And I can tell you when I said, what is he doing? Why is he not playing Jaleel Okafor in this game? Why is he not playing him extended minutes with Jaleel Oak with Randall down with the fouls? Anthony Davis not available. The the only other big you have off the bench is Jalil Okafor. You've got to play him. Extended minutes. Gentry chose to sit him down and continue to watch the Utah Jazz play lob fest and watch Rudy Gobert dunk all over his forward. This was on this was on Elvin Gentry. This he talking about the game plan didn't work and that we're happy with a four and one game. Uh, whatever. I, my mentality is we're going to try to take every game at home. Every game that you win on home gives you a higher seed because you're supposed to win games at home because you got home field advantage. That's how it's supposed to go. And any team that's in competition in this NBA should be thinking the same goddamn way. Elvin Gentry is the reason why the Pelicans lost this game because he had a shitty plan and didn't want to play Okafor when he should have matched seven footer against seven footer. You wouldn't have had all those lobs at the rim. At least a portion of those lobs where he would have been able to stop and make Gobert defend him on the offensive end. But anyway, we're about to go to our break. When we get back on the other side of the break, we're going to have some interviews. We'll have hit what Jill Okafor had to say. He'll chime in. We'll finish breaking down this game. Then we'll preview the upcoming game against the Nuggets and we'll give you the question of the day. All that on the other side of the break. Stick with us. You listen to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Forget ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. 
Do you need a domain name? How about a host for your website that can work with WordPress? Try Namecheap.com. They make registering, hosting, and managing domain names for yourself or others easy and affordable because of the internet needs people. Namecheap is an ICANN accredited domain register and technology company founded in 2000. It's one of the fastest growing American companies according to the 2018 Inc. 5000. Celebrate nearly two decades of providing unparalleled levels of service, security, and support. Namecheap has been steadfast and customer satisfaction with over 10 million domains under management. Namecheap is among the top domain registers and web providers in the world. They offer a full selection of popular and unique domains along with fully featured hosting packages, SSL security certificates, who is guard privacy protections, and more, all at the lowest prices in the industry. So if you need a domain name or hosting or anything else, think Namecheap.com. That's right, Namecheap.com. Check the description section below for link. There's a lot of reasons to be a fan, but only NBAstore.com has all the gear. Sports fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear. From all the leagues, teams, and players you love, unique one-of-a-kind designs exclusively by Fanatics, and autographed collectibles from today's biggest stars shipped directly to your home. Join Fanatics Rewards for free to earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and for a limited time, get 20% off all orders. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Eye View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G. Bound. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash pelicans dash I dash view. What's up, sports world? The PRO Media Network is on a mission to reach 10,000 subscribers. So besides our regular programs like the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys, the Pelican Post Game Report, Rapid Fire TSC, and others, we will be expanding out and offering other content like movie, anime, and gaming reviews for your entertainment. So if you enjoy our content, please donate at our Patreon page. Also subscribe, comment, and share and help the PRO Media Network reach 10,000 subs. Peace. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. For all things Pelicans, you're now listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. We recapping the Pelicans debacle here because that's all this is is debacle. One thirty two to one eleven trouncing. They got trounced in this game, destroyed, ripped apart. Whatever words you want to describe for annihilate is what happened to the Pelicans. Now, of course, a lot of people say, "Well, Q, they ain't have Anthony Davis there. They probably would have won the game with Anthony Davis there." And I would say, you know what? You might have a point, Frank. But you can't tell me that the Pelicans couldn't have win, won this game without Anthony Davis. They had enough offensive pieces to win this game. Nikolai Miritich uh, put up 25. Drew Holiday put up 18 points in this game. The bench scored, got the game within eight points before they had to reinstitute their starters. The problem is when the Utah Jazz was placing their starters, Quinn Snyder, the head coach of the Utah Jazz, is a smart head coach. He's seen that the lead was shrinking. He put his starters back in the game to unshrink it. And of course, I always say Quinn Snyder looks like a mob boss because he does. He does look like a mob boss to me, but all the bad guy in some of these movies, like the evil lawyer for some of these movies that you might see, Quinn Snyder definitely looks like that guy. Although they say he's a nice guy, I know. But Elvin Gentry to me, man, Sometimes he gets in his old man mind and he doesn't want to adjust. You got all these young players on his team. You got Jalo. It's the same thing he did with Sheik Diallo last year. When you put Sheik Diallo in games, that's what happened. He's an energy guy. And when you got a guy that's willing to run up and down the court and jump and make rebounds, he brings energy and he, he deserves more of a larger role in that system. 
That's my thought process. You have a lot of young players on this team, like Frank Jackson, who got extended minutes, who looked pretty good. He was a little rusty at first, but he didn't play last game. To me, that's what I'm saying. Down, you get these young players involved right now. You give them some minutes right now. Then when it comes down to late in the season, you can start seeing them get a little bit more experience and you can kind of implement them more as the playoffs start. This is Elvin Gentry. Uh, to me, it's just one of those guys that just don't want to adjust. He doesn't want to adjust. And this was a key component in this game against the Jazz. Why would you not? It's a series of mind-blowing bad calls, nine calls that Gentry make. Even at halftime, his assistant coach, Kevin Hansen, even told the halftime reporter that we have to get Jaleel Okafor in the game. You didn't see Jaleel Okafor come into that game to start that start the second half off. That would have been the adjustment. You need a seven-footer to combat a seven-footer. Now, he wouldn't have been able to stop Rudy Gobert, but he would have definitely slowed him down from catching lobs at the basket. Because when he got an opportunity to play, Rudy Gobert started catching fouls because Gobert climbing on the dude back to try to get the foul, and the referee forced to make the call. That's what I'm talking about. That's what the, That was the first adjustment that you need to make was to stop Rudy Gobert. Drew Holiday had Donovan Mitchell on lockdown. He wasn't going to explode. It's just a shame that Alfred Payton had the ankle injury, but he he looked terrible before that. He couldn't stop Rubio. And Rubio was the one running around here doing everything to the Pelicans in this one outside of Rudy Gobert catching lobs at the basket. Ricky Rubio finished with 28 points and 12 assists. Rob- uh, Gobert, 25 points, 14 rebounds. And it's easy. 11 of 13. All, most of those were lobs. He didn't have any hooks or anything. Thing. He was just lobbing, catching lobs. How do you stop a seven footer from catching a lob? Put another seven footer there in front of him so that he can't get those lobs. So Jalil Okafor, they didn't play him until it was way too late, and that's one of the reasons why the Pelicans started to lose this here thing. Now, of course, they didn't shoot well, but the reality of the situation is that if you neutralize and shut, kind of slow down Rudy Gobert, and that is exactly what happened. And even Ricky Rubio slowed down in the second half too, as the Pelicans bench brought him back. Second problem I have with El Gentry's bull crap calls today was the fact that when he seen the Quinn Snyder put his starters back in, he only put Drew Holiday in. His best offensive weapon is not Drew Holiday, it's Nikolai Miritich unless Anthony Davis is there. Nikolai Miritich did not come back and didn't play, and I looked it up. He didn't have any injury. Gentry just chose not to put Nikolai Miritich in the game. If you'd have put Nikolai Miritich in the game when you put Drew Holiday in the game, you could have won the damn game. But he wasn't playing to win the game, in my opinion. Because why would you have your best offensive piece outside Anthony Davis, who's injured? Nikolai Mirich is sitting on the bench for the majority of the second half. Unless you didn't, you weren't playing to win the game. I wouldn't have done that if I was the coach, and neither would you. So in the end, this is what happens. We lose our first game. I'm a little peeved about it because I thought they should have won this game. This was this was, uh, this was was one of the games where a bad coaching, the bad nine calls and stupid calling by Elvin Gentry allowed the team to lose the game. He was comfortable with it. And we we got we played outside of our game plan. No man, the game plan didn't work because the Jazz were throwing easy lobs at the basket, and you refused to play the only seven footer that you have on this team. You re- refused to put him in there against Rudy Gobert. You refused to do it, and then when you finally did it, they were able to slow Rudy Gobert down enough to catch up. But at the end of the day, man, this is just one of the lessons I learned. But like with a lot of older coaches, and it's the same. I don't care if you're coaching NBA, or coaching NFL, a coach on the playground. Yep. Older coaches get this this tunnel vision this this non-adjustment thing in their head where they're going to just keep riding and, and regardless if it don't work it just don't work and then we'll just make an adjustment no if it don't work you're supposed to make the adjustment instantaneously when you see them guys getting their offense from Rudy Gobert lobbing the damn ball not going to be the dead horse Pelicans lose they get their first loss they go out to Denver Hopefully this don't start a string of losses. Of course, with A D with A D there, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully the Pelicans get back on the right side. If Andy Davis is in this game, of course the Pelicans win this game. It'll be a close one. We always have trouble with the Utah Jazz because they're a quality team. But at the end of the day, you can't let Rudy Gobert catch lobs because you refuse to play the only seven footer on the team. You can't do that. You when you get when the bench brings you back within eight points of the team, you don't put in your best offensive weapon, not name Anthony Davis, which is Nikolai Miritich. They'll, they'll that's what stupid decisions that ultimately cost them this game. I'm just going to keep it real with you. Anyway, let's go into our next topic, which is the Pelican Post Game Report question of the day. I want you guys to answer this question because I'm going to be honest with you. Would you? I want to know what your thoughts are. Should Gentry, Elvin Gentry, have played Okafor more against Rudy Gobert in this game? That's my question. You already know what my response is. I want to hear what you think about it. Do you think that the coach had some dumb calls, dumb nine calls in this game to ultimately hurt them? Because in the end, the Pelicans could 
could have had this game. It was him not playing the players that he was supposed to play that cost him this game. It wasn't necessarily what Utah was doing. It's what he refused to do to counter them. Tell me what you think. Of course, we read the comments on the other show. Let us know what you think about it. The question of the day, should Elvin Gentry have played Jaleel Okafor more against Rudy Gobert in this game? With that said, let's get into our preview section of the show. We're about to go into the preview section when we talk about the next upcoming matchup as the Pelicans get ready to take on the Nuggets. Now, of course, this will be Monday night. It's a Monday night game up in Denver. Always tough. You know, when you play Utah, we play Utah, and then you got Denver. It's always a tough to match up with those guys. You know, they, they're a very difficult matchup for the Pelicans, but we hopefully will have Anthony Davis back. Most certainly we'll have Anthony Davis back. And let's take a look at some of the statistics from the game. Team stats as the Pelicans. Numbers done drop now. Now they're averaging about 125 points a game while giving up 119. Denver averages 113 a game while giving up 104. Pelicans shoot 48 percent from the field. Denver is 46 percent. Pelicans get 48 rebounds flat a game. Denver gets 50. Pelicans have 27 assists a game. Denver has 24. Pelicans have five, six blocks a game. Denver five and a half. Steals. The Pelicans get eight a game. Denver gets almost 10. And of course, the Pelicans coming out, they loss uh, to the Jazz 132 to 111. And the Denver Nuggets coming off a loss a few games back against the Lakers 121 to 114. So as it stand right now, both teams, both teams are now four and one, and this is a good game. And just know that Denver is three and zero at home. Okay, Denver is three and zero at home. The Pelicans are one and zero on the road. The only win coming against the first game of the year against Houston. Let's look at some of the report as it stands. Darius Miller, he didn't play at all in this game. Neither did Anthony Davis. Both of those guys are day to day. Although we we think Anthony Davis will be ready for the Denver game. That's what we're being told. And Darius Miller is too, from reports that I've read. Not sure about what's going on with Alfred Payton. He had an ankle injury. I don't know how serious it is, but he did. Pretty only played 16 minutes in that game against Utah. Uh, Denver, not too much to talk about. Jared Vanderbilt, the point, the little, the rookie guy, he is out. He won't play, but pretty much most rest of their stars will. Top scores for the team, starting with the Pelicans. Anthony Davis averaged about 27 points a game, shooting 52% from the field. He averages 13.3 rebounds a game as well, and that's top for the team. And Holiday is the top assist man for the Pelicans with 7.6. So Davis is the top scorer and rebounder on his team and uh, the top assist man goes to Drew Holiday. Looking at the Denver Nuggets the Joker, uh, Djokovic is the top scorer averaging about 23 points a game shooting 60% from the field. He's also the top rebounder on his squad with just about almost 11 rebounds a game and he also is the top assist man so the Joker is running everything averaging about 6 uh, assists a game so the Joker is the man up there he is he makes them go four and one is this Denver Nugget club against a four and one Pelican club this will be this is going to be a really good game to, between these two teams it's always is a good game anytime you have a team when these guys match up in the Pepsi Center they got about 19,000 people a little bit over 19,000 people that'll be sitting in the Pepsi Center this might be a sellout could be a sellout but anyway, who wins this game and why? I'm going to have to say, with Andy Davis back, it's hard to pick against the Pelicans. It's hard to pick against the Pelicans when Andy Davis is in the lineup. He'll be back in the lineup. He'll neutralize a lot of stuff that the Joker does. So I would have to say the Pelicans win a close one here against Denver. Denver's a good club, but remember, they struggled against Denver, too. You know, you got some really good players on Denver that usually like the Pelicans up. You got Jamal Murray's there. You have this this kid, Gary Harris. You know, with these guys and some of their wing players, they just, for whatever reason, they like the Pelicans up because they, you know, for whatever reason, the styles make fights. But I'm going to give it to the Pelicans in this one. Very thin margin of winning here. I think they'll win, but it'll be a close, close game. So that'll do it for the show. Thank you all for joining us on the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Support our sponsors, join our social media feed, and like, share the show. Thank you for joining us today. Peace. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. T is your escape. 
It's your opportunity to create a moment for stillness, for reflection, for yourself. It's your connection to a world of senses, flavors both exotic and familiar, energizing and relaxing. It's your retreat from an increasingly turbulent world. It's the perfect paradox of simplicity and complexity. Teabox.com connects tea to people, uniting the richest flavors of the finest teas with the curious, the cultivated, and the adventurous all over the world. The freshest tea you've ever tasted from crop to cup. There's simply no simpler way to experience the wonderful complexity of tea. Tea box, packing up the freshness. Tea thrives on freshness, and so do they. Tea box temperature and humidity control facility ensure that tea is maintained. The teas themselves go into an oblique bags with aluminum layers that protect them from excess moisture. And like with tea box, shopping for fresh, loose leaf tea is easy because you make an informed purchase. You know exactly where your tea is coming from. So for the freshest teas in the world, check out teabox.com. That's right, teabox.com. Check the link in the description section below. What's up, sports world? It's Big Q. Talking at you from the PRO Media Network, letting you know that we're attempting to make things a lot simpler on our listeners and viewers of our mini podcast. So as a result, we're leasing down a lot of our shows to have their own channels for your convenience. Starting soon, shows like Ring King Box, LSU's Tough Tiger Talk, the Pelican Post Game Report will all have their own individual YouTube channels. So thank you for working with us during this process. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. I mean, thank you for everything. Thank you for your donations and support for our platform as we continue to improve moving forward. Peace. frog.com for all of your electronic gadget needs fast becoming number one online seller of cell phone and accessories consumer electronics automobiles and motorcycles home and garden items 5d diamond painting crafts electrical and tool supplies computer and networking supplies lights and lighting supplies sports and travel items toys and hobby supplies apparel and accessories mother and kid items health and beauty items and much much more newfrog.com has up to 70 percent off on some products and you can check out their weekly promotions for all the best deals. Remember, when thinking online electronics and gadgets, think NewFrog, newfrog.com. Check the link in the description section below. What's up, sports world? This Big Q from the Sports Karma with Big Q and the guys. I'm talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to the poshlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle, life spell with a Y, L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. There's a reason he's always employee of the month. And why no shirt and no shoes the heat. is no problem. There's a lot of reasons to be a fan, but only NBAStore.com has all the gear. 